Hello everyone, what's going on? I'm Gav, the Master974, back again today and welcome to another Valve Source Code tutorial. This time around, I'm going to demonstrate how to add dynamic RTT shadows in Source 2013. So I have to give a big ups and shout out and thank you to Agelmod, Agelmod, I don't know how to pronounce it, but they gave me a comment a little while back suggesting this video. So thank you for that. And I also need to give a thank you to Saul Renison as well for creating the guide that I'm going to be using. And if you follow this video, then it would be a good idea to give Saul Renison some recognition in your mods credits. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, RTT stands for Render to Texture. And you can see this in newer source games like Portal 2 where basically dynamic objects that cast shadows have a shadow that points in a direction that's away from the nearest light source. However, in older source engine games, shadows are controlled typically by a shadow control entity, and for dynamic objects it creates a shadow directly below the object. So it can lead to some unrealistic looking behaviour. So if this implementation, the RTT shadows will have some lerping issues when an object is in between two different light sources which I wouldn't know how to fix but you can get better looking shadows than what you would get normally in Source 2013 mods. So first off as per usual you want to navigate to your mods directory and open up the games solution and then inside of the client project you want to right click and create a new file and call it worldlight.cpp and then you want to copy what I'm showing. So I'll leave a link in the description to a Valve Developer Wiki link, which will have all the code that I'm going to be referring to. So yeah, just copy the block of code that I'm showing and then paste it into worldlight.cpp and then save the file. And then you want to create another new file called worldlight.h. Uh, remove the hashtag pragma once line that's already there and then copy this other bit of code that I'm showing you and then save that file. After this, you want to open client shadow mgr.cpp, which is obviously going to be on the client. And at around line 83, below a line that says hashtag include cmodel.h, you want to add hashtag include debug overlay underscore shared.h and hashtag include worldlight.h. And then a little bit below this, there's going to be a convar called r flashlight version 2. And below this, you want to copy and paste what I show, but it's basically a function declaration for world light cast shadow callback and five different convar definitions. I'm just doing this out of convenience, so it saves me typing all of this out and having to speed up the video or something like that. So you want to scroll down until around line 794 and you want to change the compute shadow bbox function declaration to add a client shadow handle underscore t called shadow handle after the iClient renderable asterisk p renderable. So the inputs would go something like an iClient renderable, then client shadow handle underscore t, then const vector float vector vector as shown in the video. Then a little bit below this, after the set shadows disabled function, you want to add void suppress shadow from world lights passing through an input of ball b suppress. Then a void called set shadow from world lights enabled passing through an input of ball be enabled. And then a ball called is shadowing from world lights passing through no inputs, but then const. And then inside of curly brackets, return m underscore b shadow from world lights. Now this will show up as an error for now, but we're going to be defining m underscore b shadow from world lights a little later. So just stay tuned for that fix. Then at around line 825 below a vector 2D called M underscore world size, you want to add a vector called M underscore shadow DIR. And then a little bit below this, below a Q angle called M underscore last angles, you want to add a vector called M underscore current light pause, a vector called M underscore target light pause, and a float called M underscore light pause lerp, as shown in the video. Then at around line 931, you want to duplicate the get shadow direction function, but you want to change the input from a iClient renderable called asterisk p renderable to a client shadow handle underscore t called shadow handle. Then at around line 966 after the set view flashlight state declaration, 
You want to add void update dirty shadow passing through an input of client shadow handle underscore t called handle and void update shadow direction from local light source also passing through an input of client shadow handle underscore t called shadow handle as you'll see in the video. Then at around line 994 after an int called m underscore n max depth texture shadows you want to add a ball called m underscore b shadow from world lights which should fix an issue that I just mentioned. Then at around line 1114 you want to change the compute shadow b box line so it adds shadow dot m underscore shadow handle after the p renderable input. So it should read something like p renderable then shadow dot m underscore shadow handle then vec abs center fl radius and vec abs mins and then and vec abs maxes. Then at around line 1194 below m underscore b threaded equals false you want to add m underscore b shadow from world lights equals r underscore world light underscore cast shadows dot get ball with brackets after it. Then at around line 1853 after shadow dot m underscore n render frame equals minus one you want to copy and paste the block of code that I show in the video which is basically initializing the variables that we created earlier. Then at around line 2328 you want to replace the vector vec shadow dir line so the input is handle instead of p renderable. Then go to line 2511 and there's going to be another vector called vec shadow dir and again you want to replace the input from p renderable to handle. Then you want to go to around line 2975 and you want to remove the assert and update projected texture internal lines with update dirty shadow of handle as shown in the video. Then you want to go to around line 3138 and you want to extend the if statement that goes if force or origin does not equal shadow dot m underscore last origin and blah de blah de blah. So to the end of that you just want to add or which is two vertical lines then shadow dot m underscore light pause lerp is lower than 1.0f. Then you want to go to around line 3284 and change the compute shadow b box function to add a client shadow handle underscore t called shadow handle after the i client renderable asterisk p renderable as you'll probably see in the video right now. Then just below this you want to change the vector vec shadow dir line so the input is shadow handle instead of p renderable. Then you want to go to around line 3387 and again change the vector vec shadow dir input to handle instead of p source renderable. And then at around line 4222 after the royal p child loop and return false lines, outside of that function you just want to copy and paste the block of code that I show. These are basically function definitions for the render to texture shadow feature that we're trying to implement. And at this point you should be able to compile the code, it should build properly and just one note if you're using 2013 single player then you'll either get the HL2 project failing or the episodic project failing. However this really shouldn't matter because the project that you choose to use, in my case I choose client HL2 and server HL2, then these projects will compile without any errors it's only the episodic stuff that won't compile properly and I don't really care about the episodic projects building successfully or not. So basically you should have no issues with compiling these projects. You should be able to launch into the mods and RTT shadows will be visible, they'll be working. And as mentioned earlier there is going to be a slight issue with the shadows lurping between two different light sources. But the shadows should look a lot nicer now. Now one thing I can say as an extension to this feature would be to allow multiple light sources to affect a single object but I wouldn't know how to do this. That would just be for extra realism I guess. But with that being said and done that is how you would add render to texture or RTT shadows into Source 2013. So please let me know what you think in the comment section down below, like the video, subscribe and all that good stuff if you found it helpful and hopefully I'll see you again very soon for another video. So take care out there and peace out, see you later.